Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about video games. Metroidvanias are one of my favorite genres, and there is no shortage of them, especially in the indie space. However, most of them tend to be on the darker side, both visually and in tone. And while I love my Castlevanias, Hollow Knight, Blasphemous, sometimes you just want something a little more cheerful. If you're looking for some different Metroidvanias that are fun, cute, and colorful, I have some recommendations for you. The Wonder Boy series has been around for a long time, and in 2018 it got a spiritual successor with Monster Boy in the Cursed Kingdom, developed by Game Atelier. You play Jin, a boy with an evil uncle who has been turning everyone in the kingdom into animals. Jin's out to fix things, but not before getting the ability to turn into a number of animals himself. Shapeshifting is used for traversal and most of the puzzles in the game. You'll be able to slither through tight passages as a snake, charge as a lion, or sniff out secrets as a pig. The world is large, full of characters to talk to, upgrades and equipment to find or buy, and secrets to find. You'll be going through lava-filled volcanoes, ancient temples, crystal caves, and even haunted manors. This one is heavy on the puzzles. Each dungeon will challenge not just your platforming and combat skills, but also your ability to figure out how to progress. Some puzzles can be quite challenging. Visually, this is one of the most colorful and cheerful looking Metroidvanias I've played, with a bright, saturated color palette and gorgeous cartoon-like characters. The soundtrack is also amazing. If you like your Metroidvanias expansive and love puzzle solving, Monster Boy is for you. The game will last around 20 hours. Yoku's Island Express is a unique one, as instead of the usual platforming, its main mechanic is pinball. It was developed by Villa Gorilla and released in 2018. You play Yoku, a dung beetle who, as expected, is saving the land from a future calamity, but also, less expectedly, delivering the mail. You can move around the world, but you can't jump. Instead, you use a series of flippers and bumpers to bounce and ricochet yourself around. Though it's not a huge game, there's always a lot to do. Collect fruits to use as currency, help out characters in need, deliver the mail, and gain new abilities as you go. Some screens look quite like pinball tables, and you'll be bouncing around for a while, having to hit certain targets in a certain order in order to progress. Other places are more open to exploration. This game is such a joyful experience. The island is fun to explore, the characters are lovable, and the gibberish language they speak, along with Yoku's little chirps, are adorable. The visuals and music combine to make it an experience that is just plain fun. My one complaint about this game is that backtracking with the pinball mechanics can feel a little tedious, but if you're someone who's looking for a new kind of movement, and is good at angles, Yoku's Island Express is a breath of fresh air. The game will last around 6 to 8 hours. You don't see too many non-violent Metroidvanias, but Shibo takes a crack at it. Developed by Kyle Thompson and released in 2020, in Sheepo, you play a shape-shifting sheep who is exploring an uncharted planet trying to catalog all the species that live there. As you find and collect each species, you can shape-shift into them, giving you new traversal abilities that open up more of the map to you. Soon you'll be digging, teleporting, and slingshotting through the environments with a movement system that feels really smooth and responsive. There are bosses in the game, but they're more platforming challenges than they are combat. You're not shooting or punching, instead you avoid their attacks and even turn them back on themselves. As you play, you'll find lots of hidden secrets, characters to chat with, and collect feathers which can be used to purchase things. Shippo is incredibly cute, with adorable characters who are amusing to talk to. The art style is simple but fitting, with great use of color in the backgrounds and a variety of alien-looking environments to explore. If you're more into traversal and exploration than combat, Shippo is definitely one to play. The game lasts around 4 hours. 
Monster Sanctuary was developed by Moi Rai Games and released in 2020. This is a monster collecting and battling game very much like Pokémon, but it also adds a platforming and exploration element. In your quest to become a monster keeper, you pick a special spectral companion, then start traveling the world to collect, level up, and evolve more monsters. There are a lot of RPG elements here as you choose talents for each creature and put together parties to partake in turn-based battles. But your monsters also give you abilities. Some let you jump higher or swim underwater, some let you open certain color doors. Exploration is gated by your ability to get the right monster to allow you to progress. Different ones can open up new paths and secret areas. The world of Monster Sanctuary is huge, and you'll be running into all kinds of different monsters, items, the occasional puzzle, and tons of battles. The battles do get quite challenging near the end of the game. Monster Sanctuary has lovely pixel art, is bright and colorful, and the designs of the more than 100 monsters you can collect and train are really good. If you like turn-based battles and collecting and leveling cute creatures, Monster Sanctuary is for you. It's a long one at over 30 hours. Guacamele was developed by Gearbox Studios and originally came out in 2013, with an improved Super Turbo Championship edition coming out the following year. You play Juan, who is killed and sent to the Land of the Dead while trying to rescue his kidnapped love interest. But death is only the beginning. You're granted a magical luchador mask and given the ability to travel between the lands of the living and the dead with the press of a button. This game combines platforming with brawling, as combat consists of various throws, slams, and punches. Everything is color-based, both items in the world you can interact with to open up new paths and the enemies you'll be facing. You need to use the correct abilities in order to succeed. Switching between the two worlds, where things are all slightly different, will also come into play during platforming and combat challenges. The game is funny, though some of the humor and pop culture references have definitely aged. The art style is colorful and cartoony, almost looking like paper craft, with striking character and enemy models. Dialogue appears in color-coded chat bubbles above characters' heads, and the music keeps things exciting. If you like precise, melee-based combat, challenging platforming, or playing couch co-op with one to three friends, Guacamelee is worth checking out. The game lasts around seven to eight hours. Developed by Supra Games and released in 2019, Superland is a first-person puzzler and exploration game. Inspired by Zelda, Metroid, and Portal, this game leaves you to your own devices as you explore a toy world in an attempt to get an audience with the king. Superland is full of puzzles and secrets. There are so many upgrades to find in the world in order to increase your health, strengthen your combat, and increase the number of coins you can carry. The new abilities you gain to let you explore further and find more secrets are all a lot of fun. Everything from a triple jump, to a gun which spawns a cube under you, to levitation, and a beam that lets you slingshot yourself to great heights or pull things towards you. Puzzles are everywhere, some obvious and some quite hidden, but they all use your abilities in really interesting ways. The combat is honestly a little lackluster, but it's also not really the focus. Superland has a gorgeous, big open world and invites you to go play within it. The sound effects are satisfying and the graphics are charming. If you like creative puzzles, good physics, and exploration on your own terms, Superland is for you. A lot of the content is optional, but the game is around 15 to 20 hours long. Headlander is a 2016 game from Double Fine, where you play the last living human who has just been awoken from cryostasis, but only your head has survived the process. Everyone else around you has uploaded their consciousness into the cloud. You fly around a space station, as a head, and can dock with different robot bodies that you find. Most of the exploration involves getting the correct security access to bypass obstacles. You do this by finding, and sometimes fighting, the correct robots to take over. 
Combat functions like a twin-stick shooter. There are often many projectiles to avoid, and many battles are won by knowing how to properly bank your shots off walls and other objects. There are lots of secrets and upgrades like shields and increased speed. Plus, there's a rather extensive talent tree. Headlander has a cool, retro-futuristic setting. It looks like the swinging 60s, but in space. You'll run into all kinds of robots with humorous things to say and maybe even a quest or two for you. If you like humor, ranged combat, and puzzles, Headlander is a good choice. The game is 6 to 8 hours long. So those are seven Metroidvanias that are fun, cute, and colorful that I think you should consider playing. Whether you prefer combat, traversal, puzzles, or some combination of all of the above, there should be something for everyone. Let me know in the comments if there are any more that you suggest. If you want more Metroidvanias, check out the playlist of videos I've made covering them. I have a Patreon if you want to support my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.